Hello, this is Christian. Welcome to episode 4 of this PHP Stocks application using PDO. In this video, we're going to process the text file and insert this data. We're going to sanitize this data and insert it to our database. So let's go see this is done. Now, in the previous video, um, I've mentioned that I was not able to see the second row here. Actually, it's there, right? Um, if you notice it one time, I actually able to highlight it and see there. Um, the error is because we forgot to change the CSS in here. So let's fix that first. Just uh, do one of the errors in here. So in the index file, and I also noticed I did not for, for, forgot to close my div tag here in line 43. So after this uh, for loop, I want to just close it. Okay, so close the div. Okay, so now in the CSS, Right down here, the last one, I, although I mentioned in my talks, I did not actually change this to be an even. So it should have been an even number here. Okay, and then one more thing here, the TD here, I know this will apply for every table, but if you want to apply only for the stocks table, then this also says stock and then TD here, table ID. Okay, uh, yeah, those are the uh, changes I needed to make uh, in here. And uh, just to see if it works now. So there we go. And the counter was in forgot to increment that so looks good and uh, just to make sure we can do just add one more in here just to make it really really works on that so put here uh, dd dd and then uh, just some some test data so okay and there we go looks good right so I like the color okay let's do the counter and then we'll can we can move on to the next one so the counter is in the functions uh, right here, the counter, we should increment that. You can do it like we increment down here if you want to, uh, or just do here one time. You will just do that dot. You got the escape out and then go into PHP mode because you cannot put plus plus inside the uh, string. If you do that, it's just, just going to treat that as a character, so it won't work. Okay, so that would um, now increment the counter, and we can move forward with that one last time. Okay, there we go. All right, so now let's go back and delete all the data. So go to the DB level and then click on this empty here because this is the truncate um, function. We're going to delete that. And our, our index will be started back at 1 again. Okay? And that's what we want. And then now when we go to the get data, we're going to process this data and put a appropriate message. Okay, so let's go and do that now. So right in, these, in the functions file, I'm going to have a function down here. And the first thing you want to do is to see if you can read the file. So you can write a function to get like uh, maybe you can not read, but maybe can I get the file? Can get file, and then you pass in the file name, right? And here I'm just checking if the file exists or not. So you're not doing any processing here yet. If it does, it return true. Otherwise, return false, right? So this file name here uh, can be a directory too. It doesn't be a test file name. We can also check for directory. So here I would say. Um, if the file, um, if if it exists, file exists right here. It's called the file name. If that exists, then return true. Otherwise, otherwise here just would return false by default, right? Very simple like that. And that's all we need here. Really, really just simple here. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so that's done, right? That's pretty quick. <laughs> the next one here is a function to actually process the data now. So we do the actual read in here. So we still need the file name and we need to pass it to the database. So I need the DB object. Now this is the DB handler, right? Not the class itself, but the actual DB we define in here in the config file. Uh, if you remember, this guy right here. We pass it to the function. We're gonna process the data here. Okay, so we, before we do here though, I'm going to go to the index file and perform the logic up here first. So the very top, if you remember, when we uh, do a reset, we do something, when we do the stocks, this is when we load the data, right? So what should we do here? What should happen when we click the stocks and, and you know, we load the data? What should happen? Well, um, the first thing is we're going to um, read the data, right, from the file. Well, we'll check we can get the file first. Um, I want to say here, um, let me just put a comment here, uh, check if file uh, exists, right? That's what we need to do. So we can put here result is SFN K 
can get file, right? And we pass in the file name. I'm hard coding here. You should not do this, but um, uh, you should put it into a string. Actually, we should do that. Maybe way up here in the in the uh, file here, you could put the uh, file is uh, stocks txt. Okay. <coughs> Um, yeah, so we put that there, and then so we just pass in, the, pass in the file name. If that is true, right? If that is true, and then we can go in and process the data. So now we say um, I'm going to send to the process data file, and I'm going to check to see if if it's successful or not. So I'm going to return a true or false value back again. I'm going to do an SFN process data. Here we're going to pass in the file name, and then the DB handler. Okay, so if if both of those are true, then we as we we can emit um, emit a message successfully added. Otherwise, have an error. So you can check here. Um, you can say you expect to be no error. So no errors. Yay! Right. So if the result is true and the uh, success is also true, then we can display a message saying. All data, the stocks data added, something like that. Otherwise, because there's an error. So the error will be we added to the error, error array. Would be, um, you know, couldn't. Hmm, couldn't insert data. So we know something failed. And you don't want to throw the message to the user because you don't want that to be shown either. So, and then we are good here. So basically this is it for this one, right? And so let's go and do the process data here. We have the file name and the DB. So back in here, we have the file name and DB. So what is the first thing we should do here? Um, if we have the data, then we want to read the file name first, right? We, we already got that, we checked it already. That means it already exists. Um, you could check it in here, right? Notice I did up here. I did it separately here. I could have done inside the file in the process. And so maybe that's better, right? So let's do this. Take this out and put it inside this function here. You check it in here, right? You check it. You can say if um, this, the function, right? If, it, if that's successful, if it's true, then only then will you proceed, right? Otherwise, you can just say, oh, I uh, couldn't do it. So in that case, I have to go back and change it. I don't have a result here. I'm successful. You know, just a result. A success or not. Okay. So go back in here again and say if result, then I'll continue. Right? Else you're gonna return a false. Okay. You can do that, or I'm gonna do um uh um two couple things in a way. Yeah, we'll return false here. If it fails, then we'll stop here, right? If it's true, then go ahead and process the data. So now what do we do? We're going to read the open the file. So I'll do a FP handler to open the file. So F open. And you just pass in the file name. And then also a mode. The mode will be for us, we just read. So you put R here. Now again, I'm hard coding here. Okay, usually you put it, this into a um, another variable like a mode, and then you can pass that. And you can use it for different purposes. But here we're just doing read, so uh, that's fine. You can put a variable and pass it a function as a mode. Okay, but uh, it's good for now. So if we're able to open the file, then put a comment here. Open a text file for reading. All right, and then now the next one is we're going to read each line. Read. Uh, each line. That means we're going to do a loop, right? We don't know when is it going to end. So you use a function called f e o f, and you check the f p. And if if we reach the end of the file, then we're done. If it's not, so you put the not symbol here. If it's not the end of file, then go ahead and read each line, right? So here we have the first line. It's going to be the f uh, gets. It gets here and the S means a string. And then we're going to get as a string so we can get the first line of the FP. So every iteration, this gets a, it's a cursor. Okay, so cursor means it's going to point to the first line of the stocks here. 
points that, it reads that in, and then now we have access to the variable inside the line here. So this line has this text here now. Okay, so what do we need to do? Well, we need to parse it. We need to break it at each of the separator, the uh, semicolon, and then put each of these elements into an array, and then we can process that array. Right, so here you would do a data equals to, you can use the explode function. Explode function will do exactly that. It takes two parameters. The first, as you can see, is the string, which is the um, a delimiter or the separator. Us is just a semicolon. Okay. Again, I'm putting, uh, um, I'm hard coding here. Um, this is not ideal. So usually uh, you could do something like this. I'm just to make it work. You can say here, um, mode is R for reading. And then here, uh, the separator, SEP, or uh, well, the whole thing is this semicolon. Okay. So that you can change up here and anywhere else, you could just change it. So in here, then I change this to the mode. So this is actually better coding, right? the separator, and then the string will be the line. Okay, so it's going to break this into an element of array inside this data here. So this data will contain one, two, three, yeah, three, four, five elements. All right, so I'm going to show you what, what it looks like uh, line by line. So at this point, this data array looks like this. Uh, I'll put an array here. So the first one, Looks like that, and then put a comma. The second uh, here, and then the third is a string, and then fourth, and then the fifth. Okay, so this is our array now. So you can see it's an array, so you can access it using the index. And again, we're going to ignore the first index because our ID is um, auto increment, right? That's where our data, if you remember, when we process it, when we pass in data of one, two, three, and four, we skip the first one. All right. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and then in the process the data. We're going to insert the DB. And if we are able to insert it successfully, then we keep going to the next one. If it's not successful, for whatever reason, if you fail at any point, then you want to terminate the entire process. Okay. So we're going to check to see if it's successful. So if the DB. Um, DB insert uh, record, I think that's what we call right? Insert record. Yeah, insert record, the table, and then the data. So insert record, the table is just our table stock. The data is this data here, right? This local data. If it's successful, then we do nothing. We go to the next one. If it's not successful, then we're done. Return false. This will, will uh, um, stop execution here. We'll e exit out the while loop, we'll exit out the function, it returns back to the success and we get a false, so therefore we have an error message, right? But before we do this return though, we want to close the file because we open here already, so that means we have to close it. So F close the FP and then we'll return the false and we're done here. And if it's not um, no errors, then we go to the next line until we're done. After that, if the while loop is done, that means we are successful. So we here we can again close the file. And then when we're done, we're done. And then we skip that and all the way here. You could return true down here or we just return true here. Okay? Uh, either, either way. Because once you reach here or once you reach down there, then we're done. So you could put return true as the default here or right below here. Again, it doesn't matter where you put it. Uh, in this case, I put it on the bottom as a it's going to go down here anyway. Um, okay, so I think that's what we wanted, right? We turn something like that, and then we're done. So when we check over here, we um, check for successful or not. If it is, all the stocks added, and so forth. So let's go and give it a run. So back to the browser, and uh, okay, cross our fingers. Oops, no. <laughs> SFN at line 70 uh, didn't work. So line 70. Is it in these functions like 70? Oh yeah, not SFN. Mm -mm. It would be the um, uh, just can get. Sorry, didn't catch that. Uh, the reason we call this is because we're in a class, right? You have to get the can can get file through this this object. Okay, thank you IDE.
Okay, okay. It says all stocks are added. Okay. We can make sure it's there. There it is. Ooh, lucky. <laughs> okay, so everything's all here. As you can see, we should have 50 of them. All right. Here you go. You can also verify in the database. Just again, just um, refresh or just browse it. And there they are, all 50 of them. So notice it starts at one again, right? The ID. Now, if I go back, if you see if it go get stocks again, it did another ad. If you go view again, now if you go scroll down, you'll see that we have more than 50. So here we go, we have 51, all the way to 100. So basically, you double the insertion here. We don't want that, right? We just want to add the first that 50 from the text file. So what do you do? Well, we have to wipe out the data, the table first. Either that, right? You don't have to wipe it out, or just check if this OD data exists. Just you have two options, right? Because um, the reset will do that, wipe out the data, and then and then the get will be you can check it. If it's OD data, then just um, don't don't do anything, and otherwise you can sort it. So let's go back and clear our data first. Let's go back again and truncate. Okay, so. Now we should have no data. Okay, good. Let's go and uh, just do that little uh, process there. So here, right, we do, right before we do the uh, success here, before we process the data, you want to check to see if there's already data, right? So you can do something like um, here. Okay, um, let me just undo that and go up here. I can say um, check if data already um, exists. Okay. Um, then you can say um, the result. We can say exists. Um, yeah. Well, I don't know. Result is fine. <laughs> Can't make up my mind. Okay. So get all the records. Okay. The table is table stock. Get all the records. You check if there's any you check if there's any record or not, right? So you check the result and then the row counts. If the row count function has more than one record, that means there's already data, right? Otherwise, then you process this whole thing here. So we're gonna move that all the way to the end of this uh, block uh, right down here. Okay, so you would do it only if there's only additional data. If there is, you put a message here. Say something like um, stocks data already added. Okay, so so we know that there's already data. Oops, too many punctuation marks. Okay, so let's give it a try. And um, <clears throat> all right, so let's do that really quick. So if I add stocks, there should not be any, right? So add all the state stock data, there they are. If I do it again, and there it is, it says stocks already added. Cool, huh? Okay, so the next part is the reset. Reset is we're gonna just truncate the data. And then that should be a really simple one. So let's go to the reset here. Now, what do we do here? Again, back to the process. What do you do? What's the first thing you do? You can just truncate it, right? You don't care. You can say if the data is data is already empty. You can do this again if you want. Uh, this could be a um, put to a function. Okay, you can put to a function, and then you can check that to see if it's already there or not. If it's not, then you can go ahead and then truncate it. Um, that's another option too. You can do that if you want. But or you can just go ahead and truncate it. If you don't really care, just go ahead and truncate it. Then just go truncate it. And I'll use the truncate to get the rows rows back. Okay, so rows is, um, let's see, what do we do for the truncate? What do we get? The truncate, I mean the DB truncate. When we truncate, we return a query. Okay, so the query return the true or false. Okay, so is that right? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, so we're gonna do a truncate, either successful or not. So we're gonna do uh, truncate table, pass in the table, call stock, okay? If, um, I shouldn't call row, I should just say success. If successful, then we'll just put a message saying, 
um, all data removed or reset. Maybe I better stop using the exclamation mark. It sounds like I'm mad. <laughs> uh, otherwise, we have an error, right? Some kind of error. So errors, we're going to patch that with the error message, say something like uh, could, uh, could not delete or truncate. Something like that. So we have a message. Uh, maybe just say could not delete. Uh, however, okay, let's save that. And I think that's all there is to it, right? You just do it. Here, I'm forcing it to be truncated. Again, I mentioned earlier, you could check to see if there's any records first. If if you do exactly similar as this, if the count is greater than zero, go ahead and truncate. Otherwise, just say nothing to truncate, okay? But this should do fine. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Here we go. Reset. All data removed. If I do it again, I get the same message, right? Because that's what it does. Now, if you go view it, there's no data. I get stock. And here's my stock added. And it's my data. Okay, I do a reset again, removed, and there we go. Right? You notice when we when I add it back, my my data always starts at one. I mean, if you look at it, this is not well. It's a counter. It's different. But in the table, you see that it all starts at one again because of the truncate. Right? Okay. I think that's it for this one. So um, I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know.